in John chapter 5. This is not what I'm preaching out of, but I just seen it, and I says, uh, John chapter 5, verse 40, and I will not come to you, and you will not come to me. From the pre-existing life, I must get the life from God. So in other words, he's got to come to you. He has to tell you about himself. And the preacher has to awaken the sinner. And them dear songs that you hear in the mornings or in the evenings, what they do, they soften your heart. Throughout your age, your heart's become hardened. You all know that. And then them songs will soften up your heart. And that's what they're supposed to do. They just soften your heart. You know that? They'll soften your heart. And then all of a sudden, you'll feel that blessed feeling that's inside your stomach. That's the Holy Ghost working on you. You all know that. I'm not preaching to you all people who don't know. You all know. Praise the Lord for that. You think back. Think back in your life of how you got saved. I don't know how I got on this. I'm not preaching on how to get saved, but it just, I was thinking about it over there. Or the Lord put it on my heart. Think about it. Go back to the time when you give your life to Jesus Christ. Think how that was. However many years ago it was. Or however many months it will go it was. Bless your heart. It's not easy coming to sometimes. You're, you have to fight in this world with people who don't think normal like we do. I read a book that, this today. It says you're, those who are not in Christ are abnormal. And that's the truth. We used to be that way. We used to be abnormal. Now we're normal. Because... We have a destiny. Our destiny is heaven. We have a destination, and that's where we're going. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. And I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to preach God's word. I'm dying. Oh, man. I needed that. Praise the Lord. But what I'm going to be preaching out of is, um, is John chapter 14. In verse 14, yeah, verse, chap, John chapter 14, the first six verses. Uh -huh. yeah. It's, um, give me a second. It, the thing about it, when you read this, John chapter 6 is got to be probably my favorite verse. It, um, Jesus, that, that verse is just, but I, I, I don't want to go there right now, but I'm going to get to it. The disciples, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. Okay? And Jesus is telling them what Peter's going to be doing. He, he's, he's unprophesied what Jesus is going to do. He'll deny him. And um, when we all know what happened. But in, verse four, in chapter 14, in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to if I and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. What encouraging words those are. And whether I go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know thy way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. You know, it... Um, you s let not your heart be troubled. God knows your heart. You know that? You ever see a loved one 
who goes through it and their facial expression tells it all. You know that? Your loved ones or co-workers you've been around so long, you know their expression. You know how they react. You know their face, facial expression. The disciples are beginning to comprehend what's going on. Let not your heart be troubled. When you're dealing with this, every Christian goes through it. Whether you're going through a loved one who is sick, a loved one who's gone on home to be with the Lord, your heart's troubled. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. I'm in control, okay? I'm in control. Thank the Lord for that. Because you don't want me in control of it. Because I'll just screw it up. Amen. Let him take care of it. He cares. It's his peace that he gives. It's his peace. Jesus has a passion for us. He has a passion for his own. Just like you have a passion for your loved ones. He has a passion for you, the Christian. You're his. You're his youngin. And he cares for you. He has a heart for you. He cares for you. He does not want you to be this way. That's why he's telling the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. It's just temporary. That's all it is. It's just temporary. You believe in me. You believe in God. And I'm telling you, believe also in me. The thing about it is, Because you believe, because you believe is you have turned your hearts, I'm sorry, because you believe is you who have you're turned your hearts into, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, I wrote that down wrong, your hearts have went into another direction. You're following me. Your hearts are no longer facing this world, you're facing me, meaning Jesus Christ. That's what I'm trying to say. You're, you've changed, you have a change of heart now. Amen. That's what he's trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say, in other words. I just said it wrong. It, it's just... My second point is, in the Father's house are many mansions. Isn't that crazy? In our, I, just think, he's going to prepare a place for us. What a blessing that is. What a blessing that is. To go and do that, his love towards us, towards his own. Jesus is confident in the saints. In the Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I, would, I, ha, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You want to know something? Life is never the same after Jesus Christ touches you. It's never the same. I tell you what, you talk to some. you talk to... When you're praying to the Lord above, it's someone you've never seen, but you know he's there. Because it's that presence. You, know, you just know he's there. Because the natural man knows not the things of God. Because I that, I was that one young lady who gave her life to Jesus Christ this morning, when uh, she looked at me, I, when I seen her crying her eyes out, bless her heart, that was her breaking point right there. That was, that was it. Everybody's, every Christian has been in that situation. And I just, I see her, and she was crying and crying and crying. I said, good night in the morning. And then she came over to me, and she said, I want to get saved. I said, well, bless your heart. I jumped up a little bit, and bless her heart. And, um, but it's, the thing of it is, his love towards his own, and Jesus, it's just, sometimes we just can't fathom his love towards us. I can't. Because sometimes I know how I am throughout the day at work, and you can get worldly every now and then. I do, but you don't mean to be, but I can get that way. It's just, it's, it's life sometimes, okay? It's just life. And, and I've... In verse 3, it talks about if I go to prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where, and where I am, there ye, there ye may be also. And my, it's, a prepare, it's a house it's for a prepared people. You know something? We might as well as lean on and take his way at the beginning. But we won't because we've, we're determined to do it on our own way. However far we may drift away, we must always come back to the words of our Lord. We could always say, I am the way. I am the way. You know, I was... Um, the thing about it is, when we... we uh, I'm, I'm, I just had a thought that left me. When we're, the prepared place is a place that more than likely won't be. I don't think I'll be spending a whole lot of time there because I'll be under Jesus' feet, thanking Him and praising Him for what He's done for me. Yeah. Well, and I can't wait. It, um, now, this is just according to Philip. That's all it is. I'm not... Death doesn't really bother me. It doesn't. Because I know what's going to happen to me just as soon as I... I remember uh, Brother Larry Seals talking about that one time. He says he's confident enough in, in, in Jesus Christ when I die right... I hit this floor, I'm going on home to be with the Lord. And what a blessing that is. <coughs> Excuse me one second. It... Um, in, in verse 4, and whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. What we're talking about here, I've told you. Our focus is Jesus Christ. He is our shield. In times of trouble, He is our shield. In our, he is our comforter. He is my comforter, for sure. What a blessing it is that she, He can be your comforter. It, um, and, he, uh, and He is... He is our way maker. That is like them kids sang this the song last week. And all we have to do is stay the course. We have to got to stay the course. It um you can't get off course every now and then. You can't do things your way, and you don't want to do it that way. But praise the Lord, we can go back to him. Thank the God for that. We can go back to him. And our point, in verse 5, it talks about, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? You know, Thomas reminds me of a part-time Christian. It's like they come to church every now and then, and they, and they don't get it. You know? But uh, at least he is, he's admitting it. And um, he's being honest about it. He, the, the Christian shouldn't be in darkness. Not at all. Because Jesus, the thing about it is, God doesn't want, if, God doesn't want to get even with you, okay? All he wants to do is just change your behavior. That's all he wants to do. And, you know, it's just like, when you're getting saved, you know, God's Holy Spirit comes upon you inside you, and you get to go to heaven, and that's part of the benefit package. And when you, you're telling people about this, the thing about it is, God's good to everybody. God's good to the unbeliever. He gives them food. He gives them raiment. He gives them a housing. He does all of this, and they think it's their own. They think it's their doings, and it's not, because God's, it rains on the just and the unjust. And praise the Lord that he... But, and I tell people this, <laughs> and they just look at me like I'm a weirdo. But that's okay. I don't care. And um, I tell you what, sin promises much, but it pays little. You know that? And, it, and so many people, their gates are closed in their brain. In other words, they're, they're, they're closed-minded to Jesus Christ. And the thing about it is you must have that same nature as Jesus in order to go to heaven. It's just like a big magnet, and the magnet's coming around, and Jesus is the magnet, and he's getting all his metal. Metal meeting the Christian when he comes back to get his church. Yeah. He's not going to get gold and silver and whatever else, copper. I think it's copper too. But that's what Jesus is going to do. And if you don't have the same nature as him, I'm telling you, you're not going. 
you're not going. It, there's a, I've said this before, but the, the dominating passion all through the New Testament is for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He just has a passion for his people. He has a passion for saving people. He has a, just like the lady at the Samaria. He went out of his way. I think it was 30 miles. That's compassion and love. I don't think I could have done that. Uh, and, um, but he, that's him. That's Jesus. That's what he does. He has a compassion for him, people. And praise the Lord for that. I'll tell you what. I'm thankful that he is the way. And I'm thankful. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus uh, said unto uh, Moses, I am that I am. That's what he said. And Jesus did not say that I'll show you another way. He, what he say? He said, I'm the only way. I'm the only way. I'm the only way you're going to do it. And he didn't say, I'll teach you the truth. He says, I am the truth. Everything I tell you, you can write it down, brother. It's the truth. And there's no secret life. He is the life. And what a blessing it is to have that. I'll tell you what, he never insists on taking his way. He simply says, I am the way. That's it. I am the way. The Lord laid this on my heart a couple of weeks ago. The pastor texted me uh, and uh, he said, Would you like to preach this? The 20, I think today's the 22nd or 21st. And um, I said, Yeah, I'd love to. It, uh, I know what I, 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 this is my second or third time preaching in the church. I tell you, it's different. When you're going to jails and you're preaching there, um, <laughs> I feel comfortable in jail for some reason. <laughs> I, I am. Brother Josh can probably vouch for that because he preaches a long time, I'm telling you. Brother Josh, he's a preacher, man, I'm telling you. He can preach it. I mean, he can preach it here too, but, but he can really preach it there at the jail. He's good. And, um, but it's just a blessing to come here. I know what to be able to do this because I know who I'm preaching to. I, you all have not heard anything. Everything you've heard, you've heard it before. But it's always good to get a, a, um, a refresher course knowing what's going to be taking place. Tomorrow we face another day unless Jesus Christ comes back. We know what we're up against. You're up against non-believers. You're up against people who's going to be cussing. You're up against people who's going to be uh, talking foul mouth. You're going to be talking about people who's going to be saying what they did over the weekend. Oh, the weekend wasn't that long. I get that every stinking not, uh, Monday morning. I don't care. I tell them what I do at church, and they just, huh? And they just give me the look. I tell them I'm a, I preach, and I'm saying, and I love every minute of it. I said, uh, I remember the pastor saying, Rare is it in time you actually get to do something you really enjoy doing. And I enjoy this. Amen. I don't know if you get anything out of it, but I get a whole lot out of this. Because I can come here and preach the gospel about Jesus Christ because I love Jesus. Amen. And I know he loves me because he wouldn't have went to the cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that I can come here because you're my family and I love every one of you. Because, believe me, I have nobody in my house. I got a dog. And, but it's just, um, I'm so thankful that I can come here. This is the best church in America, I believe. And I love, I love every one of you. And bless your heart for listening to me. And I, I didn't, but Pastor, I appreciate you very much. You and your family. I'm done, Brother Josh. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.